Modern life, the school run, work calls, inflation, remember your lines. Scientists are carrying out pioneering Sorry, research. The whole thing. Okay, the whole thing. The whole thing three okay. times. Our brain never evolved for any of this, and yet here we are getting on with it as best as we can. And it's all thanks to our brain's incredible capacity to adapt, to learn, to grow. I'm on a journey to understand the miraculous plasticity of the human brain. The brain will even change its structure. The core, the architecture of the brain can change. This is neuroplasticity. Once thought to be limited to youth, we now know it's a constant force in shaping who we are. Your mind can change the very uh, substrate of its own operations. Helping us to learn. Adaptability this is one of the most remarkable aspects of human intelligence and I think plasticity is the mechanism behind it. And to heal. Well, neuroplasticity actually is at the core of a neuro rehabilitation. An active field of study that's helping us to understand how we became us. As things move forward, we're gonna see more and more how much our motor ability actually is tied to the way we think and feel. And I want to know whether there's anything we can do to harness or boost neuroplasticity in our daily lives. On this journey, I'm going to give you three hacks to help strengthen crucial connections and keep our minds younger in the process. As a science journalist, I've always been fascinated by the workings of the mind. And today I've come to Royal Holloway, University of London to scan my brain before embarking on a six week brain altering course. Just taking a moment to settle into this posture. This is Thorsten Barnhofer, professor of clinical psychology at Surrey University. He's currently running a study on the effects of mindfulness in managing stress and difficult emotions. He's also been looking into how mindfulness changes the actual structure of the brain itself, showing signs of this neuroplastic rewiring even after just a few weeks. And what makes mindfulness especially impactful is that by reducing stress, it allows even more plasticity to take place. But will it work on my brain? We're about to enter the fMRI scanner to see what my brain looks like from the inside. I'm getting my brain scan before and after a period of doing just 30 minutes of meditation a day. Hi, Melissa, how are you? Yeah, good. So all you need to do is just relax, try to keep still and look at the fixation cross. Okay. And it'll last for about 15 minutes. Right, so that's quite a long time. But what exactly is neuroplasticity? Plasticity is the ability of the brain to change based on stimuli that is given. These are the basis of learning and memory. It's a really dynamic process that involves the whole brain. And something else really fascinating that we've only learned recently, the brain will even change its structure. Our brain is uh, constructed from a billion of neurons. And uh, when neurons fire together, they, it's called wire together, they become stronger and the, the connection between them is becoming stronger. These can change and shift a lot more in the early years of life than they can as we get older. Of course, they're still changeable later on. And that's really what we call brain plasticity, the ability of the brain to keep reorganizing itself um, throughout the lifespan. Uh, that affects the functional networks uh, in the brain and a functional change will be what areas of the brain are connected to what areas. There's also a structural part of plasticity, mainly changes in how the areas are organized in the brain, whether areas that are more dense or less dense. Well, neuroplasticity actually is the mechanism through which the, the, the brain repairs itself. And now there are many ways to harness and boost plasticity in patients with neurological disorders. So neuroplasticity, the brain responding to change, actually takes place all the time. But we have the power to influence this to some extent too. And there's good reason to want to boost it. Increasing studies suggest it can play a role in delaying degenerative diseases like dementia. It can also help us to rewire the brain after psychological trauma, meaning that trauma itself is not permanent. 
Back in the scanner, I'm shown a series of numbers and asked to recall the preceding number to test my working memory. There will be other processes underneath the working memory process that get interesting. Um, so mind wandering will happen and if mind wandering happens or it comes close to it, there will be a certain uh, brain system that becomes more active. Mind wandering is something that of course might be helpful uh, in many ways. Uh, it might help us with creativity, but it's also something that can go awry. And this is where repetitive thinking comes in, where ruminative thinking comes in, where worry comes in. And um, those are the factors which increase stress. Stress hormones, for example, uh, cortisol, it will go up. And if levels of cortisol remain high, um, that can actually become toxic for your brain, for regions of your brain which are very plastic. This shows that stress, amongst many other things, is a direct inhibitor of neuroplasticity. So as part of my first brain hack, I'm training myself to manage stress through mindfulness. Over the following six weeks, I'm going to spend time learning to be as aware as possible to the present moment and see what impact this has on my brain. So what mindfulness does is uh, it can buffer stress. You become aware of challenges, those more ruminative responses, uh, a tendency to worry. We can't take away the pain of uh, any stressful situation, but uh, there's a sense of us being able to choose what the next step is. So the very first step uh, within this is to say, yes, uh, let's come back uh, from this complexity to something that is relatively simple and stay with that. So finding this point where the breath is most vivid for you and then following the breath moving into the body and out of the body. And I feel calmer already. <laughs> but my mind really was one is the idea to mm. not let your mind wander. Um, so I was thinking about like, oh, I need to send that email, I need to do this. And I was like, okay, no, how interesting, yes. about breathing. Uh, that's, that's a really interesting observation. Uh, so, so first of all, we, we can feel that actually as I'm doing this, I come to it with the intention to stay with the breath, uh, to keep my attention on the breath. And actually what happens, uh, this is just what the mind does, it will wander off. That tells you about the working of the mind. That's something which is relevant. So we can simply go and say, ah, that's what it is. We come back, go back to the breath, go back to the breath. So we do two things at the same time, if you like. We're, we're strengthening our muscle for attention, for staying on the breath. And we're cultivating our capacity to come back, to be more flexible in our attention. We're also gaining insight into the working of the mind because we're realizing, ah, this has come up. After six weeks of meditation, kindly guided by Thorsten, I did feel a lot calmer. But would this feeling show up as a physical change in my brain? We'll see. <laughs> After another brain scan, I went to Surrey University to find out. This is very exciting to see my brain on the screen. That's your brain, yes. Do you see any results in my brain? Yes, of course. We, we see changes uh, in the brain. It's alive. Uh, it always changes. I'm alive. That's, that's a good sign. <laughs> that's a good sign. And we have some interesting uh, uh, changes uh, that align with what we see in the literature. I'm a sample size of only one, of course. Yes, exactly. So we need to be cautious for all those who are scientifically minded. Uh, they wouldn't forgive us. So what have you found? We looked at the amygdala, um, that's in light blue, one of each in each hemisphere, and they are very important for emotional processing. And we see change in that region, particularly... You do see change? Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. The right uh, amygdala uh, is reduced in um, volume, and that's what you would expect as a stress uh, reduction effect. Uh, so it gets bigger the more stressed we are. Um, it's uh, increased in people suffering from depression, 
or anxiety disorders. And with mindfulness training, we see that reducing in volume and there's a hint of that yeah. in, in your data. And I wasn't very stressed to begin with, but even so, we, we see a tiny decrease, which is, I think that's quite exciting. Exactly, yeah. But that wasn't the only change he saw. He also found changes in my posterior cingulate cortex, a region involved in controlling mind wandering and rumination. What was interesting to us was that um, we see an increase in the posterior uh, region of this. What's and that? Uh, yes, in, in the darker uh, blue. It's part of a wider distributed network in the brain, which is uh, referred to as the default mode uh, network. The system comes online when our mind wanders. And of course, that's something which is very central to, to meditation. And we have seen in previous studies uh, changes in this region. And uh, that's exactly uh, what we find in your data also, uh, a small change in that uh, direction. Did it increase in size or decrease? Uh, it increased in size, which should be an indication of an increased control. So literally, just by being mindful, I managed to increase a, a, a part of my brain that prevents my mind wandering too much. Plasticity means that there, there's constant flux, so we would imagine that consistent input is needed. So it sounds like I need to continue meditating and come back and see you in a year, <laughs> and then we'll see some really significant things. We would recommend, yes. <laughs> It's amazing to think that after just six weeks of meditation, there was a visible change in my brain, and that through repeated practice, I could further boost neuroplasticity by reducing stress. That said, I realise we don't all have access to metaphorical Sicilian mountainscapes to meditate on. And in real life, carving out this additional time can be tricky. So in the following episodes, we'll be looking at other ways to harness and boost plasticity. Okay, yeah.